वेलकम टू बुनियाद पॉडकास्ट बाय डॉक्टर मोनिका नागपाल वी डिड नॉट इनहेरिट दिस वर्ल्ड लाइक दिस देन हाउ कैन वी गिव दिस टू आर नेक्स्ट जनरेशन इन दिस फॉर्म we need to reflect mindfully on our core values and make conscious efforts towards protecting the planet and also achieve all sustainable development goals with buniyad i monica nagpal will bring to fore sustainability champions who are striving to bring back harmony with the nature and also dignity of each life namaskar dosto Today again we are here with yet another episode of Punyad laying the foundation of sustainable living and we are honored today to have with us Rukhaya Joshi Hello ma'am welcome to the show Namaste Dr Monica thank you for inviting me This is so wonderful and she is a retired professor from SPJN College from Mumbai and she is very very passionate about sdgs and lot of things will unfold when she will introduce herself i request ma'am to please introduce yourself uh, so i am rukaya joshi i am born and brought up in mumbai um, i am born with a very modest family background uh, but uh, uh, as a girl child i was very passionate about learning so i went on learning at a very young age i became a professor and uh, continue to learn even after marriage uh, and uh, uh, have been privileged uh, to uh, hold various responsible positions in college at university of mumbai and in 2006 then i was invited to be a professor at spj in institute of management and research one of the top mba colleges in india and there uh, i think i got a lot of uh, privilege and support uh, uh, to do what is required to be done and that's where uh, i i've been all my life con- connected with education uh, even now i do post retirement i continue to be teaching in various colleges and uh, 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 during uh, maybe about 38 years ago i was connected to doing social work uh, when i was first connected to baba amte's uh, uh, bharat jodo yatra uh, uh, and uh, since then i have been associated with various csr and not for profit organizations Thank amazing you. amazing and she says that look at what she's saying she say when i was young as if she's old now <laughs> she looks as young <laughs> she is so young at heart and in her action she is younger the uh, like i was when i was interviewing her for the intro, for the interview i was having an intro with her i was just amazed how much she can do how much a single individual can do we will know and we will not feel overwhelmed when we are facing any of the problems or when we are asked to do something because we know that one person can do so much and inspire so many people All so right. since this is an episode for sustainability i will stick to that part and i will ask her to now uh, tell us that when did she stumble upon sustainability yeah Uh, so i got in touch with sustainability uh, more so at spj and institute of management and research in 2010 uh, uh, i started a course i designed and started a course uh, for not for profit and csr by the time the csr rules had not even come uh, mm-hmm. and uh, you know i believed that all the management tools techniques uh, and everything should go not only to business but it should also go for not 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 for profit so i proposed it to my then dean dr ml shrikant and he was very very happy and he mm-hmm. gave freedom and support to design an executive mba course so this is where when i was we were all professors sitting together in designing the course we uh, said that sustainability uh, is what the not for profit is supposed to work for you know mm-hmm. i mean and that's where uh, it came into uh, my 
connect and thing like that. So earlier it was millennial development goals, but yes. there was not much talked about. The yeah. moment it came in 2015, so our course though started in 2011, we went on, you know, improvising the course with all that which was coming new mm. into uh, not only management, but also where the changes would happen, you know. So right. when new CSR law came or when uh, sustainable development goals came into 2015, mm -hmm. I must share this with your audience and you. We were the first institute in the country uh, to have uh, had a course on sustainable oh. development goals. And this has been recognized by UNGCNI uh, in one of the meetings that uh, this was the first institute to do. Because that is so very important, you know. Yes. I mean, yes. we see the change from uh, uh, the millennial development goals to sustainable development goals. If you uh, go through anyone uh, mm -hmm. goes through the entire details about seventeen goals, the targets, and yes. the way all the countries have been talked about, how uh, they have particularly, you know, the thoughts behind the goals. Also, if every goal has given the reason and what you are. United Nations will do for making right. that goal a reality. If you read that, you would find that they have they put up the responsibility for developed countries to also make sustainable development goals a reality uh, by yes. uh, 2030. You know, yes. so today yes. we are uh, just about 2,459 days before 31st of December uh, uh, 2030. And that takes us a lot of responsibility. A lot of responsibility. That is what I keep telling that we are in just the last leg. And if we are not pushing hard now, uh, we will lag behind and things are not going to get better automatically. We have to be there. Each individual has the responsibility to work towards it, even if it is a small effect, but you have to work. So, yes, ma'am, what I was uh, wondering was when you were the first one, like 2011, when nobody even knew about SDGs, it was about uh, Millennium Development Goals, MDGs is was, was called, and you were the one, like a pioneer, you uh, gave the full curriculum. So what was the thought behind becoming uh, giving that curriculum to the MBA uh, students who really went ahead uh, and uh, took up those curriculum. And also, uh, I, I just want, was wondering that why would anybody from uh, MBA would want to do all of this? Like, how did you motivate them to take this curriculum uh, also? Uh, so, uh, Dr. Monica, first of all, this is an MBA, uh, executive MBA, only for those who are into not-for-profits and CSR. Okay. So, this okay. is not for those who are into general MBA two year and um, those business executives. These are yes. especially for not for profits and uh, uh, you know NGOs and the CSR okay. and all okay. other uh, yeah. bodies which is this. Uh, uh, so this was the first one, and uh, you know through the various NGOs, some of them work for health, some of them mm -hmm. work for education, some work for environment. You know, mm. Akshay Patra would work for no hunger, you know, yes. Yes. and you know, so each one of the NGOs work for different uh, goals. Correct. Not so, they also work for different targets. Yes. Yes. Like, uh, certain organizations work for maternal mortality, child mortality. Yes. You know, so you would have them work for it. And we also mm -hmm. wanted to bring in because a certain percentage of our people from CSR would be in the class. Mm -hmm. So they should know when they take up projects mm -hmm. uh, for as a part of their re responsibility of 2% CSR, they should take up those which are necessary for the country to sort of support. You know, right. and right. where we are lagging behind. So Niti Ayog has a complete dashboard. Mm -hmm. It gives you complete data of which state mm -hmm. is where in which goal. Okay. So when I say which goal, it means mm -hmm. they take up all targets. Targets also, together. right. So yes. they would have a mechanism to sort of rank different uh, states. And hmm. you can come to know that certain states are red, they give color code. Uh, so yes. red is a negative one and negative a green one. is a, a positive. So you would see that certain states would be red in many 
uh, goals. goals. And yeah. in which case, it would become sort of a mandate for the CSR to think whether they would want to go there, you know, Correct. and put their money, uh, support the NGOs local out there and work on the targets which are uh, to be taken up. Now, there can be choice because there is so much work to do. I mean, just Absolutely. to share with you here and what pains me a lot more and that also gives me a lot of energy, uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Monica, is that if India attends its SDG targets by 2030, 50% mm. of the world targets would be attended. Oh my God. Oh my God. So that is the impact our country is going to have. And we all have to be so responsible. That means every Indian has to be responsible. We cannot leave it for some few people or the government, or few NGOs, or few people, good-hearted, good smartens to do that. Everybody has to get involved. Yeah. It's not we will fail. It is UN will fail. Yeah. Actually. Actually. And, you know, I, I, the amount of reports that UN generates on SDGs every mm. year, mm. Uh, the amount of effort it makes, and it is not only United Nations, every arm of United Nations. Yes, yes, I see you that, know, I see uh, that. So whether it is UNICEF, UNDP, or you talk about, you know, the drugs and drugs. Uh, those, you you name uh, UNGCNI for that matter, yes. where I'm associated, yes. and all of them work together. You know, yes. technology, uh, so they have put up milestones that something would happen by 2018, something would happen by 23, by 27, and mm -hmm. 30, you know, so likewise, different mm -hmm. milestones, of course, COVID inter, uh, created a lot of issues in between. Yes. Uh, yes. because of that um, in fact we at SP, uh, we at uh, our indian uh, this thing we have not been able to collect all the data and nithya yeah. has not been able to update the latest reports on mm. where we are in uh, targeting uh, yeah. targets uh, presently but i think uh, in some time we should be able to gather all the data we've been mm. giving it to the united nations but uh, you know to make it publicly available we need mm. to even do this so that people come to know about it Correct. Uh, so yeah so we uh what i understand out of uh, whatever i we have uh, worked together for this is that everybody has to work together yes amazing uh, so government so, of course takes leadership you know yes of but, course but at individual level we all have to work yes and so that is my next question now that what is the kind of impact is what you are creating around how are you creating that kind of an impact with all the doings that you're doing uh you were able to create a curriculum which is actually very fascinating to me and when you're talking about going to the schools also you were talking about the principal uh forum which you are connected to and how they are going to the schools so what is the kind of impact that we uh we, you are creating and how it can help the other people also yeah uh, so thank you for this, but it is at multiple levels, right? Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, all the NGOs where our students learn SDG, mm -hmm. then they go back and map what they do with certain targets. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, so that is the, so that, you know, you create ripple effect. Yes. It yes. is one thing that you do something directly. Hmm. But there is something where through your students, through their hmm. organizations, hmm. wherever they are, they are in Jharkhand or Assam or they are in Kerala, wherever hmm. they are, they go out and connect their you know work to SDG, which is now after 2022, a government has also tried to tell CSR that they should map whatever work they are doing with hmm. SDG. You know, right. so that uh, you know, it is a consolidated effort that is happening. Absolutely. So similarly, when we do any consulting uh, activities or when we uh, sort of uh, do any advisory activities at an institute at a personal level, we also try to guide the CSR. 
you know mm. uh, so for example for uh, birla group uh, in uh, uttarakhand we did some consulting and where we went out to connect we, how to do the csr that was the mandate prepare that strategy so we mm. helped them connect it to the local requirements with the sdgs you know uh, so that is one thing but as you rightly said that one it is that it is corporate one is government but there you know as gandhi always said the change in the society yes. starts yes. with the change in the man yes and therefore yes. we can't just leave it for the corporates to do or uh, the government to do and therefore it should start at our level Absolutely. and as you rightly pointed out it should start early yes right yes uh, so uh, some of the people in delhi started e chopa Hmm. you know sdg e chopa okay o oh, e chopa right? uh -huh. sdg e chopa now sdg okay. e chopa is a, a kind of an effort where hmm. schools from delhi hmm. principals of the schools from delhi hmm. came together to hmm. try and take sdg to schools right right it is to catch them young yes so it is one thing that you and i at whatever age uh, we become responsible and we try to do whatever behavior you know mm -hmm. the way we live yes it, you know, everything it starts from morning till evening uh, yes, whatever yes, yes. kind of products that we use or what we do what we don't do if you you be Correct. just little conscious about what yes. we do you will find that a lot of things we can change absolutely no? the mindfulness is the key actually mindfulness is the key yeah Uh, so what we what we go out to do is you know we become responsible so for example at my institute we created a responsible sustainable campus i've mm -hmm. been teaching in another uh, college just yesterday i uh, i had a session and where i went out to uh, create a, a a sustainable committee mm -hmm. and a, a group of students will try to see that 20% of electricity consumption of the campus reduces Yes. Another yes. group will work to see that uh, water consumption of the uh, entire campus reduces, yes. and the target yes. is twenty percent. Yes. And the third group will work on the recycling and you know of the waste management waste where we yeah. separate yeah. so that uh, we uh, you know I mean lot of efforts have been made by government and BMC if I talk about in Mumbai uh, to try and see that there is a proper segregation at the receivers end and right. then we go out and uh, do it so uh, the responsibility always starts with self absolutely and, and it is always to start young yes right. so i mean you inculcate uh, this kind of thing so at at my institute we would not sell plastic water yeah yeah on campus you can't buy plastic water yes you no this is very from important outside? yeah, yeah this is very important because as i was mentioning in another episode also that every conference that we are going today we have a plastic bottle even yeah. if it is a sustainability conference we have a plastic bottle those small yeah. small bottles are there and once everything finishes those bottles are just littered here and there so as responsible so it is are we not first thing is to carry your own water bottle yes so everywhere we will have uh, uh, water taps and all where we can provide water but we should be able to carry our own water bottles if that itself is started no a lot of things can be clear, cleared up it is no, first step yeah this is the first step yes i also wanted to share ask you ma'am that uh, regarding uh, the smart city we were having yeah. a conversation before about the smart city so smart city as we talk about smart cities comes to the mind that it is technologically very advanced probably the infrastructure is very good uh, probably it has good education hospital facilities but is that all uh, about smart city which we talk about or how do we get to the sdg part of a smart city please enlighten us on that yeah uh, so this is actually uh, aspirational uh, districts now we call it districts earlier it was called city and the mm. word used was smart city now it is called aspirational district uh, you okay. know it is now from city it has gone down to district level Uh, mm. over last few years the change has been in the government policy and they mm. want to now not cover the whole area 
of uh, the thing and they want to go smaller uh, part yeah, and put up checks, and yeah. see what is required so it is more you know from uh, smart it is changed to aspirational you know mm. that these are the ones where we want to work so these are the areas which government has identified pan india in mm. different states certain districts based on the backwardness of the sustainability aspects in that and government is giving a lot of money mm. to the administration okay okay so that they can take choose how to develop that so okay. uh, through UNGCNI, I was requested to assist. Then it was called Smart City, Thane Smart City, hmm. Hmm. and the entire administration. Hmm. So whatever kind of projects they take up, I mean, of course, they evaluate. They have their own methods of evaluating the administration would do. But my job was to try and help them connect that to SDG goals. Yeah, that is most important because smart city in a way you will make everything, the infrastructure, everything will be made. But yeah. again, it is going to create more waste. Is it how are we going to change, give out that behavioral change in the people there? That yes. is most important. So, for example, you would have some cycle points, you know, mm. at uh, all the railway stations, there'll be cycles. Mm. Uh, and you can take the cycle uh, from that place to your workplace. Correct. Then there would be certain points at which, uh, you know, at the evening or morning, depending upon, you know, the workplace area, you would have series of buses made mm -hmm. available by the uh, city administration, the yes. district administration, so mm -hmm. that people don't bring their cars yeah. you know, individually, but people travel by bus. You know, Correct. this is happening at the international airports and airports, you know, in a big way. And it Correct. is now been, you know, with a lot of technology. So you can, uh, as you deplane, you immediately see which uh, bus is available and you can book your ticket and you can go around and do it. So the effort is collectively made, you know, kind of things. And like in Mumbai, uh, you know, we have a huge network of railways. Uh, yes. At railways, uh, you know, at Churchgate, we have... A, a bottle a crushing machine mm -hmm. where uh, all your plastic bottles which i mean behavioral change has not happened to the extent to which we don't uh, create waste but yes. now if we have created a waste can we put it up Re in a recyclable Recycle. manner you know use yes. all the r's which are there you know there are nine r's of sustainability, reduce, yes. recycle, and all that. So here the question is about recycling. And yeah. then it gives you points which you can use to maybe buy something and things like that. So uh, by giving some incentives to people, yes. uh, you know, you are bringing about a behavioral change. So the bottles which would otherwise be littered at the railway stations are now uh, put in one machine and they are being crushed and it can be recycled like that. Right. So the idea is that how at different levels, government yeah. level, at CSR level, at NGO level, at personal level, you know, so uh, for example, for uh, uh, children, you know, so you tell, uh, you use, make them use their washing of hands, you know, yeah. such that they don't keep the tap on. On, or yes. A lot of uh, countries of the world, you would have seen it at the airports. Yeah. Uh, there, there is a sensor, you know, yeah. that you remove your hand, the water stops. Correct. And so wherever or you have, you know, the uh, sensor lights. So we brought yes. that at SPJ where we went out to have our washrooms where it would have only the sensor light. People enter, the lights will be on, you know. So whereby, you know, lights are just not left on. On, so yes. sustainable, you know. So you Absolutely. do LED or you go out for solar panels. A lot of subsidies across the country has been given by the government for people to convert their street lights or home lights or, you know, uh, Pune is one city I want to share where a lot of builders on hmm. their own without being told by anybody are putting uh, 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 solar panels as a part of the newly constructed buildings yes. without any incentives or anything. It's, it has become a responsibility which they are demonstrating yes. through uh, yes. doing it. So, uh, you know, here we are talking about, when we are talking about kids, 
we are talking about you know uh, 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 celebrating environment day you know yes. uh, you you are uh, gender for example sustainability Correct. and gender is a very connect uh, part of it we are uh, at the uh, group of people we are trying to tell gender equity which is sustainability number 5 we yes. are saying that let gender be there across all the goals yes it means that if it is medical then 50% of the total allotment must go to women if it is education then 50% must go to women's education likewise mm. water then you know everything for whatever yes. Uh, yes. you know you are talking about uh, there should be uh, equity and therefore uh, gender should be become an underlining uh, uh, goal for all the other all the sdgs yes this yes. is how that is the, yes, this yes, is yes. a great great uh, thing which you are planning to do and i'm sure we lot of people are going to uh, be there together to follow all of this because there are so many sdgs and people get overwhelmed by which one to follow and which one which not to follow but what i feel is that whatever is in my capacity i should start there no me i should not because if i have good water supply in my city if i have good electricity if there it is clean and neat if the children are really going and getting educated if the females are uh, very very safe in that city that itself is a aspiring city every citizen would like to have and that is how we can be able to have a sustainable goals uh, achieved by 2030 and we will have more cleaner environment we will have safe environment yes. and now i would like you to tell us few very practical tips that is why because everybody seems to because i cannot do it leave it that attitude comes in so if we can give some practical tips to anybody who wants to go out and do something Uh, except for uh, for example waste management that is uh, what we talk uh, about so many times but yes. anything beyond that anything yeah. beyond uh, waste management how we can really touch upon the partnership goals or we we can talk about the biofuels how can a person be be responsible for all the other kind of uh, sdgs is what i'm asking you uh, what is those practical ways they can uh, uh, contribute so small tips we can and the list is very long but we would try to you know at our institute we would put up the things that you could do you know which is uh, the yeah. uh, the thing which you can put up but for example uh, take only as much in your plate that you want to eat yes don't waste your food in your plate hmm. if you have functions we have done it when we have functions and we know that a lot of times the food remains because we always want to put more so that we don't run out this is our yes. indian way of thinking and nothing wrong about it uh, so yeah. then we we definitely have the link to those ngos in that particular area who will come on a call you know when the function yeah. is about to end we would call them they would come they pick up the food and they go out and give it to uh, the people who uh, yeah. deserve yeah. need it yeah. in that particular local area you know yes. so there are there are community all over it is like that there are community um, fridges and there are large fridge okay. you know uh, which are kept at one corner mm. right and uh, of a street mm. and there is food in that okay well if you have you have food, uh, food left over mm. you just go and keep it there you don't right. need to do anything correct anyone correct. who is hungry will go and open and see what is there and wants to have take it now again this is very important because you will not forcefully give it to somebody who is not hungry at that time already yeah they are already full how can we just go and give it to somebody because we have more yes so uh, likewise uh, in usa you would have many communities we have started in bangalore and many other cities where we would have one particular wall in uh, in a street hmm. where you go and keep what you don't need yes example, i i know that yeah books uh. clothes shoes you know you know a lot of times children have a lot of colors and you know things like that which they have used a little and then uh, they really uh, don't need more then you right. go out for, uh, for in during pandemic many efforts were started by dr reni and others where mm. you know uh, even covid medicine for that mm. matter 
you mm -hmm. consumed three tablets and seven tablets are remaining and you don't yes. know what to do and they are scarce and yeah. costly Absolutely. and they are lying with you and some are dying without it you know Correct. Uh, Correct. so uh, to collect those unused medicines there are a lot of ngos working towards that uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know you have organizations like gunj uh, mm -hmm. who are doing a lot of efforts of collecting your uh, waste, yeah. you know, waste. whatever yeah. kind of waste that can be, right. you don't right. want. And it is an example, Dr. Monica, of a, a very huge supply chain management. Yes. Where, yes. So they collect it at different locations, separate it and see what can be made best out of it, recycle it, reuse it, repair it, or whatever yes. that is required is as right. that you can do here oh, we yeah. are also looking at you know when we go to the market and this culture sometimes you see in among uh, those who are marathi speaking maharashtrians in in maharashtra they have had this culture for a very long time that they always carry one bag cloth bag in their bag yes. you ask some of the maharashtrian people they would not step out of the house without the bag so right. they don't depend on the plastic bag, whether that it is allowed or disallowed of so, so many micrograms, that doesn't matter. They always carry a cloth bag with them. So at, uh, you know, as Lions Club, what we did was we purchased a huge amount of uh, cloth, made uh, gave the employment to women, made mm. certain uh, kind of uh, bags and right. distributed it away in lakhs uh, uh, to people so that you know when the bag is available you will remember to carry and you will carry it with you and you will not use the plastic so the idea at an individual level dr monica is how can i be conscious of reducing yes how much plastic i'm using can i use less correct right? Correct. Can I can I be very very conscious about water? You know, yes. uh, for example, a lot of garden water, uh, uh, kitchen water. I'm sorry, a lot of kitchen water can be used in garden. Gardens also, yes, you know? absolutely. And Don't you can use cleaning. that even uh, at home. Cleaning. You can do it. Yeah. You cleaning can of the it. floors, cleaning of the uh, clothes. All that water can be actually used, which we just put it in the drain. Yes, so yeah, this is very and important. And also, you know, take alternatives. So what are the alternatives of plastic? Mm -hmm. You know, so if mm -hmm. you can make use of that, uh, you yeah. will be able to think, uh, of course, uh, multiple levels at which it has to happen. Even the corporates have to think about, instead of plastic, have Treta pack or packs right. which are, you know, easily biodegradable and things right. like that. So one has to think at different levels. At individual Absolutely. level, I have to be very, very conscious of what I'm consuming from morning till night, you know, uh, yeah. not amassing things. That is one of the... Yeah, uh, they keep on hoarding, 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 yeah. yeah. hoarding, hoarding, hoarding. How many kinds of things we want in our life, we don't know. Everything is going to be just remaining here, but we keep on hoarding, hoarding uh, yeah. clothes, shoes, e-waste is so much of e-waste in the house is there and we just keep holding and we, we need then bigger houses and then a bigger house yes. so yeah that is so bigger like, house is not an option uh, is not a problem but you know we have uh, too many things uh, correct uh, you know more space, take more as much yeah yeah more Sorry. space more holding then <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah therefore gandhi says that this world has uh, enough for everybody's need but, but not, not enough for everybody's greed, greed you know greed. kind of thing yes. so if we can Absolutely. Uh, so to me sustainability is short term pain for long term gain wow that is amazing <laughs> i can i think this is the message Please yes. give your message, a small message, and this is what you would have said, but please give a message to our audience uh, about this. Uh, yeah, please. so uh, when I don't, uh, even even the air uh, flight, once I forgot to carry my bottle, but I remain thirsty, but I didn't take the plastic uh, water, you know. Uh, so I said that I'm doing this so that your grandchildren uh, can live uh, with, uh, you know, happily kind of a thing, you know, the kind of videos which are going on on YouTube about how yeah. they will have the air which is so very polluted and things. I think this the problem is so grave. Mm. And I think the communication 
has not reached to people to uh, realize that uh, its future is going to be so bad you know uh, the suddenly, gravity of the situation yeah the gravity of situation has to be told to the people that it is not for somebody's fancy ideas we are all doing all of this no the gravity of situation demands all of this yes yes and we need to do it uh, as educators it is our responsibility so whether we do it in school or i do it to the mba uh, students so yes. that when they start manufacturing some goods or when they do Correct. something they are Correct. particularly keeping that in mind as to yep. is my product creating more carbon uh, footprints or <laughs> what is it you know kind of a thing and they continue to be working on that yeah yeah great thank you thank you so much uh, ma'am it was really wonderful your insights are precious to all of us what you have shared with us is amazing and i'm sure the audience will really take a lot of things uh, from your talk today and they will try to implement and we hope that more and more people will come out to share their own knowledge here and i'm asking uh, now giving a call to all the people who are into this field sustainable development uh, goals field you are doing anything you you are creating a product please come and we will be sharing your things here you can be that one person who can really inspire so many others to follow this path uh, so thank you so much it was wonderful thank having you, thank you. Uh, have a good day thank you so it much is, namaste uh, everybody's task and leave no one behind is what yes. we need to do you know Actually. thank you and all the best in your thank effort you. to try and reach out to more and more people and you know create awareness i think we begin at that and actions is something with which we end thank you yes. thank you namaste thank you. namaste